Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be giving you tips to stop excessive sweating. But before we get into it, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. If you like skincare content from a board certified dermatologist, be sure and subscribe and turn on your bell notifications so you know as soon as my videos go live, give me a follow over on TikTok and Instagram because I'm very consistent with skincare content on those platforms as well. The medical term for excessive sweating is hyperhidrosis and it affects about 80 million Americans. Now sweat is totally normal. Its function is to cool the body, but with hyperhidrosis, you have sweat production that exceeds the normal thermoregulatory mechanisms. In many cases, excessive sweating starts when you're very young and about 60 to 80% of people dealing with hyperhidrosis actually have a family history of it. Yippee! Sweating is uncontrollable, it's unpredictable, and it can interfere with your day-to-day -day activities. When you're dealing with hyperhidrosis, you'll have visible sweat on the surface of the skin at rest when you're not exerting yourself or expending any energy. Excessive sweating falls under two main categories, primary focal hyperhidrosis and secondary hyperhidrosis. Primary focal hyperhidrosis is the most common type, and it's exactly what it sounds like. You have excessive sweating on one or two body sites, like the palms, the soles, under the arms, the scalp, the face. It's not related to any underlying medical cause or it's not secondary to a medication. Then the other category is secondary hyperhidrosis. This is excessive sweating due to some underlying medical problem or a medication that you might be taking. Medical issues that can cause you to sweat excessively include type 2 diabetes, hyperthyroidism, going through menopause, head trauma, obesity, gout, and certain tumors can cause you to sweat excessively. With secondary hyperhidrosis, it can be generalized, meaning all over your body, or it can just be localized to a few body sites. Make sure you check in with your doctor, especially if it's new and onset, to rule out any underlying medical problem or medication side effect that you may be experiencing. Why should you treat hyperhidrosis? Well, it certainly can have a negative impact on someone's quality of life. People may feel embarrassed, their clothes are drenched with sweat. It also can impair day-to-day -day function. If you have excessive sweating on the palms, for example, it can become difficult to open doorknobs. And having excessive sweat on the surface of the skin, it gets broken down by bacteria that can lead to body odor. It also puts you at risk for certain skin infections. Like if you have excessive sweating on the feet, it puts you at an increased risk for foot fungus, as well as warts. How do you treat excessive sweating? It's gonna depend on the type, the location, and the overall severity. Number one is over-the-counter antiperspirants. These have aluminum salts in them. They're applied to the skin at night before you go to bed, and then they can be washed off the following morning. The way these work is that the aluminum salts actually cause the sweat in your sweat gland to precipitate that plugs up the sweat gland and ultimately leads to less sweat output. A lot of people don't realize this, but aluminum-based antiperspirants, not only can they be applied under the arms, but they also can be applied to the palms and soles. They're not so great, however, for the face or the scalp they can be too irritating in these areas. It's definitely a mainstay treatment for hyperhidrosis. The main side effect is irritation. Apply them at nighttime, that's when they work the best. Then the following morning, you can wash it off the surface of the skin because it's already gone to work in the sweat gland that's below the surface of the skin. So anything left on the surface of the skin, it's not really doing you any favors. It's just gonna be irritating there. So you can actually take a damp washcloth and wipe away the antiperspirant the following morning. Second treatment option is a prescription medication that you take by mouth. We have a few options here glycopyrrolate and oxybutynin. These actually will reduce sweat output all over the body. So they're not specific for any one location. They do have side effects. We start at a low dose to minimize the risk of side effects, and then we increase to get you good control of the sweat without causing side effects. What are side effects that can happen with these? It can cause dry mouth, dry eyes, it can make you constipated, it can cause urinary retention, uh, there is a risk of glaucoma, and with long-term use, it does have the potential to cause cognitive impairment. There's also a topical form of these medications that you can apply to the skin that comes in a wipe. It's called Cubrexa. While the pills that you take by mouth will decrease sweating all over the body, these wipes are only meant to be used under the arms. So if you have hyperhidrosis under the arms, this might be an option for you. The medication can still be absorbed into the body and have the potential for side effects. When you use these wipes, you're gonna take out a wipe, you're gonna use it 
to one underarm and then to the other underarm and then you're going to want to make sure and wash your hands because if you touch the wipe and then you touch your eye it can cause your pupil to dilate <laughs> number three option is something called iontophoresis this is a prescription medical device that you can use at home it's basically a tub that you fill with tap water and you submerge either your palms or soles into the water and then a low level electrical current goes through the water and it actually kind of stuns the sweat glands, if you will, into producing less sweat. Reduction in sweat is temporary, but after you get the onset of the sweat reduction, you don't have to use it as frequently in order to maintain the results, but you do have to continue using it in order to maintain the results, just not as frequently. Side effects with this are very low. You know, its main drawback is that it's kind of time intensive on your end, and it's only meant for palms and soles, because as you can imagine, it's not really possible to submerge your underarm in a tub with this electric current to get good conduction through the sweat glands in the underarms, nor is it appropriate for your face or your scalp. Overall though, for the palms and soles, side effects are minimal. You can have some local skin irritation. Number four is neuromodulators like Botox, Dysport, Xeomin. Can be used on the palms, the soles, face, the scalp. A small amount is going to be injected into the skin and the nerves that innervate the sweat gland take it up. And the way it works is to block the release of something called acetylcholine. That's a little transmitter that signals for sweat output. Downsides of this are that it can be very painful, although the area can be numbed and it can be expensive. But in some cases, your insurance might actually cover it, especially uh, if it's getting in the way of your quality of life and you've tried other things and they failed. The results typically last anywhere from four to six months. So it's not a permanent solution, but gives you pretty long lasting control. And again, it can be used for the palms, the soles, under the arms, the face, and the scalp. Then you have microwave thermolysis, otherwise known as MiraDry. This is a non-invasive device used to treat the underarms. It uses microwave energy to permanently destroy the sweat glands. You typically need anywhere from two to three treatments spaced three months apart, but because it permanently destroys the sweat glands, you get long lasting sustained reduction in sweat output. Side effects may include pain, swelling, local skin irritation, you can develop little nodules, and you can develop a reversible neuropathy. This is used to treat the underarms. Lastly, there are a variety of procedures that will just bin under the umbrella category of surgery, specifically for the underarms, excision, which is cutting out the sweat glands, liposuction, laser, and curatage, which is a little tool that is sharp and used to scoop things out, uh, all of those can be used to destroy the sweat glands under the arms. However, you can develop scarring with these treatments. As you can imagine, they are destructive and it's used for underarms. You wouldn't wanna do this on the palms and soles or the face for sure, or the scalp. Under the umbrella of surgery, you also have a sympathectomy. Now this is a more invasive procedure. This is a full on surgery where you go into the operating room. It's done under anesthesia. Basically the surgeon goes in and either cuts or destroys the nerves innervating the sweat glands to lead to reduction in sweat output. However, one of the main issues with sympathectomy is that you can actually get compensatory excessive sweating at other sites. There's that, but it can can be an effective option for people who have tried other things. It's just much more involved and would not be like a first line option offered to people without trying out some of these other less invasive things. Sympathectomy would be used for excessive sweating on the palms, the face, and the underarms. All right, so those are the treatment options, but let's just go through based on body site. Palms and soles, what do you have available? Aluminum chloride, antiperspirants, prescription medications, whether they be glycoparlate or oxybutynin, because again, those decrease sweat globally all over the body. So that'll help the palms and soles. Iontophoresis, that's the bath with the electric current that you do at home. Neuromodulators, whether they be Botox, Xeomin, or Dysport. And sympathectomy. For excessive sweating under the arms, you have over-the-counter antiperspirants, oral medications, again, because they decrease sweat globally. Cubrexa wipes. Neuromodulators, Botox, Dysport, or Xeomin. Microwave thermolysis, otherwise known as MiraDry. And you have surgical options. Excision, liposuction, laser, curatage, or or sympathectomy. Excessive sweating on the face and scalp, what are your options? Well, again, aluminum antiperspirants, they're off the table, too irritating there. 
You have uh, oral medications, again, decreased sweating globally, neuromodulator, whether it be Botox, Xeomin, or Dysport, and sympathectomy. So those are the treatments based on location. I hope that was helpful. If you deal with hyperhidrosis, some other lifestyle things to keep in mind, stay active. Exercise is actually beneficial if you cope with hyperhidrosis because uh, people who are in good shape, actually they become more efficient with their sweat production and ultimately make less sweat. Stay cool, wear uh, moisture wicking fabric so that you don't trap sweat up against the skin. It can lead to heat rash, irritation, all sorts of skin problems. Try and avoid spicy foods. Sometimes that's a trigger for sweat production. Definitely see your healthcare provider if you haven't already. Make sure there's not an underlying medication that's causing these problems for you or a medical problem like hyperthyroidism. Definitely check out my recent video, by the way, on the nail findings of hyperthyroidism. Uh, I hope this was helpful for you guys though. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.